Hello YouTube, I'm Tom Brad, and this is the fifth tutorial in the Terragon series. In this video, we're looking at adding custom POIs to Terragon. Now, it isn't straightforward just yet. The complication arises with the need for two additional files, one called the POI property list and the other called the town property list. Now, a solution to creating these lists is in progress, and I'll make a video on using that as soon as it's available. Terragon will be updated eventually to include more support for mods and custom POIs, but for the moment there is a solution to adding many POIs to your world by using a custom preset. And the preset we're going to look at today will add Compo Pack 48.6 to your world. Let's have a look. There is a link in the description to the Magoli Combo Pack Discord where you'll find the download links for the files we're going to use today. Following that link takes us here and we'll start by downloading the actual Combo Pack collection from Terragon DL Maps Presets. In there, we can have a look for CP48.6 Terragon Release File. This number might change depending on when you're watching the video. So if I click on that and say, yep, we go to where we're going to download CP files and click on download now. Wait for the time to count down and then it should start downloading, which you can see in the bottom left. Once your file is finished downloading, go to your downloads folder and open up the cpterragon.zip file. Inside of there, you'll have another folder and inside of that, you will have two more folders. The one that says CP48.6, you can right click on that and say copy. I'm going to open up a second instance of file explorer inside of there i'm going to navigate to percent app data percent then seven days to die inside of there mods and then i'm going to right click and paste now this transfer might take a little while because it is a huge collection of pois it's roughly about four gigabytes i think but it is very worth it because you're getting literally thousands of pois added to your vanilla game Okay, let's go back to our zip file and have a look for the other folder, which is called CP Presets. If I right click on that one, I can say to copy. Then I'm going to go inside of my Terragon folder down to Presets. And inside of there, I'm going to paste that extra folder. So just to refresh, inside of the CP Terragon zip file, there is another folder called CP Terragon. Inside of that, there are two more folders. The one that says CP48.6, you're dragging to your mods folder in app data roaming. The other folder, you're dragging to your presets folder in Terragon. Okay, let's start up Terragon and see what we get. So we're in Terragon and I'm going to go to the file menu and load. That takes me to the presets folder and there I can see our new folder called CP presets. If I open that up. We can see we've got a few options. There is more detail on what each of these do on the Magoli Combo Pack Discord, but the one I'm going to use is this one here, CP48.6. Also, with this one, we should get all of the vanilla POIs and everything from CP. I'm just going to open that. And I need to go back to basic settings to check a few things. First of all, let's check the output directory is correct. And it is, it's going to generate worlds in seven days to die. The world name needs changing. I'm going to change that to CP map. The world seed is just a random number. Put in whatever you like, but let's do it. So we've got the same thing. I'm going to put 2222. I'll leave the world size at 6K, shock horror, not four. The game directory here is telling me the wrong folder. So what I need to do is change that. Now, an easy way or a quicker way than manually putting it in there is to quickly go back into the expert menu and go to the option that says set game data. If I click on that, down at the bottom, we've got a button that says game directory. If I now select that button, it should take me to where it thinks the game is on my system. And in this case, it's in Steam, Steam Apps Common, Seven Days to Die. I'll say select folder and we should be good to go. Let's quickly look at the other settings here. We've got rivers enabled, which I'm going to turn off, as you know, because they do take quite a while. We don't need the previews on for the rivers. The max town count is set to 25, which is fine. The max town size is 150. That's pretty good. Min town size is three. That's fine. Wilderness spawn limit is set to 5,000. I don't think we'll get 5,000, but I'm just going to leave it at that anyway. I'm not going to change anything else. So I'm just running all of this from the basic menu and I'll hit the run button. 
So this stage of the generation took around about three minutes. And of course, I've got rivers turned off. So that would add quite a bit more time. And then if I'm happy with this and I want it to continue to then start drawing the roads, I would still need to click on the continue button here. And that will add quite a bit more time to the process. So in my tutorial videos, I'm not doing those stages because there's no need for you to see the roads that I end up with because yours are probably going to be different. And I don't need to be sitting here for an hour waiting for them. Let's have a look at what we've got on this map here. If I do a quick zoom in, we'll see what we have here. I'm looking specifically for some X costume. There we go. So we've got City Park by Spider. We've got a pharmacy destroyed by Azizi Tong. We've got the timber shop by Magoli. And what else have we got? If we have a quick look up here, the drive in by Azizi Tong and the wall cart by Swalk. And there's a car wash by Z Bark. How about that? So tile wise, we've got a country residential there and we've got the country town intersection. If I just have a look around the map, see what else we've got. In terms of wilderness peer wise, we have the bunker by Steel Axe. Good. And the army one destroyed by Zinkosa. Um, another bunker. Oh, that bunker is by the man himself, by Pilly. How about that? We love you, Pilly. You'll hate me for saying that. So to finish generating this map, we would need to click on the continue button at the bottom and let it run through the section where it creates the roads, then goes down to this red area here, which is where it actually exports the files into your generated worlds folder. Well, thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been useful. And if it has, you know what to do. Clicking the like button helps my videos get seen by other people on YouTube because it lets them know they're worth watching. And I'll see you again soon with another video. Bye-bye.